In lesson 6.2, we take our lesson that we just learned about scatter plots and we take our vast knowledge and mastery of lines and we take lines and put them on top of scatter plots because scatter plots are just kind of like random. I don't want to call them random, but they're like a bunch of dots that are all over the place. And the line helps you predict where values will be where there is no dot. We had a question in the last lesson where we had to predict the amount of like grams of fat given the number of calories or some, something like that. And that's what a line of fit does. It predicts where numbers would be. So as we scroll down to example one, it asks us to um, make a scatter plot based on this data. And the data is the number of absences in a school year and the student's final exam scores. So we've got all these different students, we've got the number of times that were absent, and then we also have their final exam score. So what we're doing is the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna pause the video and you're gonna make a scatter plot, um, and then I will draw the line of fit with you. Now normally when you're making your scatter plot, you can pick what you want your scale to be as long as your numbers fit. But for consistency, let's all have the same scale. So on the x-axis, which we're going to call the absences, let's go by ones. Okay, you can fill in the rest. And then over on the y-axis, which is the score, let's go by tens. And you can fill in the rest. Okay, so you're going to pause the video. You're going to... Um, make the scatter plot, and then when you're ready, press play, and I'll draw the line of fit with you. All right, now here are the rules for drawing the line of fit. You want it to go through as many dots as possible, but it's not you're not playing a game of connect the dots. So you're not going to zigzag and connect to the dots, you know, in some sort of wacky pattern. You're going to make a straight line and you want it to go through as many dots as possible knowing that some dots won't land on that line. But the dots that don't land on the line, you want to kind of keep it balanced and have an equal amount on top and on bottom and kind of keep the spacing. So, you know, it's kind of like an art that you have to master over a, some time. But um, I'm going to draw the line and I just want you to make your line kind of match as close as possible to mine. Alright, do your best to match my line. I circled the points that my line goes through and you can see that I have a couple of dots on the top and I have a couple of dots on the bottom and they're kind of balanced so you do the best you can. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write an equation of this line and we know how to write equations because we did that back in chapter 4 and 5. So um, I'm going to use two points that it goes through. I'm not going to count boxes because you can really only count boxes when it goes by ones or when they're on friendly intersections. That's really the best time to count boxes. Since my scale is not going by ones on the score column, um, I'm not going to do it. So it goes through 388 and it goes through 873. So I'm going to use my slope formula, x1, y1 x2, y2, and remember the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You subtract the y's, you subtract the x's, and then you turn it into a fraction. So I have 73 minus 88 over 8 minus 3. So that gives me uh, negative 15 over 5, which is a negative 3. So my equation has a negative 3 slope. Now I'm going to look up at my grid and it looks like it's hitting right here. This number was 94. No, it was 97. Um, so it kind of looks like it hits the, 90, the 97 dot. So again, I'm just estimating. So my equation that I'm going to write is y equals negative 3x plus 97. So that's the equation of my line. Do I have to do anything? In, oh, I have to interpret the slope and intercept, and it gives me this remember phrase. Interpret means to explain using the labels. So I, let, I need to interpret the slope and the intercept. I'll do the intercept first. Doesn't matter which one you do first. 0 and 97. 
So what does this mean in terms of the story about being absent and your final exam score? Well, it means um, if a student has zero absences, their score is 97. Now, obviously, we know that this isn't perfect, right? But that's our estimated value. And then the negative 3 slope means that each time, remember, slope words, slope sentences are each, every, and per. So I'm using each. Each time a student is absent, their score goes down three points. And again, this isn't a perfect representation. It's just estimating what's happening. Last one. The table shows the number of bats in a cave each year from 2010 to 2017, where x equals 0 represents the year 2010. So the starting number is at the year 2010. That's what year 0 is. Assume this trend continues. In what year will there be 65,000 bats in the cave? So it gives us a setup, so don't freak out that you don't know what to do. It tells us the first thing that we have to do is kind of just understand what they're asking us. We're given the number of bats, and they want us to predict when there will be a certain number of bats. Then the plan is to plot a scatter plot, make a line of fit, and find the equation. Then, in order to get the answer, we're going to use our equation to find um, the, the year. So just like the last one, I'll start you off. For consistency, I want us all to have the same scale. So let's make our axes. Even though it's darkened, you do have to put the axes and the arrow tips. The x-axis is going to be the year since 2010. And then the y-value is going to be the number of bats. And it's going to be represented in the thousands because that's what it says in the chart. Um, last thing I'm going to do with you is I'm going to set your scale. So we'll go by ones in the years. And you can make the rest of them later. And then let's go by 25s. And you can fill in those as well. All right, pause the video and just make the scatter plot. All right, so this is actually a pretty perfectly linear trend according to my dots. So I can make my line and I'm going to pick two dots that it goes through. It looks like it goes through, um, I don't know, let's use this dot and this dot. So those are the points 1, 3, oh, 6, and 7, 197. I'm not going to write out all the formula work. I'm just going to do it. 306 oh, minus 197 over um, 1 minus 7. So that gives me, let me get my calculator out. 306 minus 197 is 109 divided by negative 6. It doesn't go in evenly, but I can kind of estimate it to be negative 18.2. So that's my slope. And I don't need to think about what the intercept is because they tell me it's at 327. Um, and my line goes through that dot, so I'm going to put it at 327. Even though the dot is at 0, 327, that's a good point. Even though the dot is at 0, 327, I need to see where my line's intercept is. And coincidentally, it is the same thing. So the equation is y equals negative 18.2x plus 327. Now the last thing up top in the solve section, right, if we look at all the things, we did everything here. 
And then the last thing is to use our equation to solve by plugging in y equals 65. And we're plugging in 65 for y because y was the number of bats. And also, we're plugging in 65 because it's in the thousands. So instead of plugging in 65,000, we're actually just plugging in 65. So I'm going to start you, and then you're going to finish it. So you're going to need your calculator handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 65 for y. And you're going to solve this equation using inverse operations. And then when you have the answer, click play, and then we'll be done. So I got approximately 14.4. It was a weird decimal. Um, and I know I just told you that we'd be all done, but 14 isn't the year. It's the number of years since 2010. So we do have one more step to do. If zero represents 2010, how many years or what year is it? 14.4 years after 2010, and that would be the year 2024. So that's the year when the bats will be 65,000. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.